Are you inviting those old planners? Of course I did. Mr. Hilsinger, I have seven o'clock. You ready? Okay. I'd like to welcome you to the St. Louis County Planning Commission public hearing. This meeting is for the purpose of hearing presentations on petitions for rezoning or requests for special procedure permits. I'm Wayne Hilsinger, chairman of the commission. In addition to the other members of the planning commission, I would like to introduce on my right, Jacob Trimble, director of planning. And on my far left, the planners assigned to tonight's petitions. I hope you have picked up a copy of the public hearing guidelines brochure in tonight's public hearing notice, which are on the table just outside the door. The brochure describes the format we will use for the meeting and the agenda lists the order in which we will hear the petitions. If you wish to speak, please fill out a speaker attendance card indicating the petition you are here for. If you speak, please give your card to me as you approach the podium. If you do not choose to speak, please put your card on the table at the exit to the chambers. The card includes a QR code that you can scan to subscribe to the Planning Commission agendas. By doing this, you will be able to be linked to a copy of the Commission's report when it goes to the County Council. The Commission will not make a decision on petitions heard this evening. Normally, the commission will receive staff reports and make a decision on tonight's petitions at the next executive meeting on December 4th, 2023. Additional comments, letters, and pe petitions submitted to the Department of Planning within one week of this meeting will be distributed to the planning commissioners in their executive meeting agenda packet. Written comment can be sent email to planning at stlouiscountymo.gov. If additional information is required, the decision may be delayed. The planning commission's recommendations will then be forwarded to the county council who has the responsibility for the final decision. The meeting will observe the following guidelines. Planning staff will introduce the petition and show photos of the site. Then the petitioner will present the request. They will be allotted 15 minutes. Then persons in favor of the request will speak. After that, persons in opposition are with concern. Persons speaking as an individual will be allowed two minutes. Persons representing, representing groups will be allowed five minutes. Please keep your remarks brief and avoid repetitive or seconding presentations. After all opposition speakers have spoken, the petitioner will be allowed five minutes to answer questions and points raised by other speakers. The commission may ask questions of any speaker. After each petition is heard tonight, we will ask for a show of hands of persons in favor and those in opposition are with concern. This is not a vote and it's not binding on the commission or the county council. The purpose is to make the crowd count part of the record for each petition. And with that, we'll hear tonight's first petition, which is 29-23, Lashana K. Douglas. Good evening, PC 29-23, Lashana K. Douglas is a request for a conditional use permit in the R3 residential district for 0.43 acres located at the terminus of Air Court, approximately 270 feet south of Siesta Lane. As the commission can see, this site is located in North County and the, on the right, the site is outlined in red on that aerial. This is the land use map. As you can see, the site is primarily single family um, to the north and to the east. And then abutting the site is a multi-tenant <coughs> retail facility, as well as a childcare center and two vacant lots that are zoned commercial. This is a larger aerial of the site with the site in question outlined in red. 
This is looking south at the public hearing sign. This is looking north up Air Court. This is looking south at the site in the home. This is looking south at the driveway of the home. Maybe, there we go. This is looking south along the eastern, um, between the eastern neighbor and the property in question. This is looking south along the western side of the property in question and the western neighbor. This is looking south going down further along the western side of the property. This is south along the eastern side of the property looking into the backyard. This is looking southwest going diagonal across the petitioner's backyard. And this is looking north from the abutting site. And next we'll have the petitioner. Thank you. So it's this button, and you kind of want to bring that down a little. And it's kind of finicky. <laughs> which one? Which one? This one is this guy here, and just like kind of a that door. Okay. Okay, good evening. Um, today I'm sitting, I'm presenting um, a position. Um, my name is Lashana K. Douglas. I reside and I am the owner of 11831 Air Court. Um, right at this time, I'm currently running a in-home licensed daycare and I'm looking to apply for the conditional permit to turn it over to a licensed child care center. Um, some of the things that um, I'm looking to offer for the center is more of a 24 hours, seven days a week, which I am licensed at this time to do that, but um, I'm just trying to switch it over to a licensed facility uh, for child care instead of an in-home child care. Um, at this time, provide transportation within a five mile, five, I'm sorry, five mile radius. Um, at the residence, we also provide parking, which you are um, already kind of seen in the slideshow. And we are expected to at least have 24 to 30 kids on site due to St. Louis County um, requirements and regulations of six children per one vehicle. Um, during that time, because it is a residential community, uh, the drop off times will only be between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. and pick up between 4 p.m and 6 p.m., which the traffic is minimal with no effects on the neighboring. On this slide right here, you kind of see where it's um, the residential property. Uh, if it turns over to a conditional use property, it will still be the same thing as in transition, just a little bit more different for us outside of being a conditional use property. Uh, we know that daycare facilities are generally not among the allowed use in residential zones, but at this time, I was requesting to see if I can get a conditional use permit. The next slide is basically, um, I did a little research and some of the daycare facilities are within a five mile radius that they do not provide 24 hour care or weekend care. Um, that's a big issue because some of the parents and the people in the community need these services, especially for essential workers. Um, and that's one of the biggest um, things that a lot of parents are pushing for because they're leaving their children at home alone because they don't have the facilities that can provide these services for them. Um, the next one is more of the site development plan. Um, according to this plan, the parking for the cars, uh, the dimensions did meet the requirements for St. Louis County for the 19, by nine, um, it is one car uh, garage with two can fit in a driveway, possibly three, and one in the front of the premises, or it can be a waiver to get another parking space in front of the uh, premises. Um, the total kids expected is more between 24 expected children and more than 30 children on the premises at that time. <coughs> This is a layout of the facility right now. Um, this is the backyard. It is a fenced in backyard. Um, so the children are allowed to run freely in the backyard. 
Um, I do have a fence inside of the backyard that's um, more for like infants and toddlers to separate them from more of the bigger kids, but they are allowed to run the whole backyard. This is a layout of the premises, um, the first floor, um, as well as the first, uh, the basement. So the first floor in the basement is being used for a summer the center for us to live in its, uh, quarters as well. But um, it's a lot of room for the children to have different spaces to go around the house um, just to make sure that they're not just um, cooped up in one room. So they're, um, they can go either upstairs and downstairs. So it is a layout of each one of these rooms uh, identified on the layout. This is the inside of the facility, which is more of the upstairs and some of the downstairs. So as you can see that the facility is already um, up and operating, it's been operating since May the 2nd of this year. Um, and it is separated into different age groups. And at this point, that is the end of the proposal. Um, so right now, um, if I have any questions or concerns, um, you've more than freely to speak on them. Okay. Anyone? May I ask a couple yeah, questions, uh, Mr. Hilsinger? Uh, um, Ms. Douglas, would you be, you or would someone be residing in the home or would it, the exclusive use of the structure would be for a child care center? If it be, are you asking if it becomes a conditional use yes, permit? Yes, if in the, yes. If it, if it turns over to the conditional use permit, no one would be residing at the okay. home. And so currently you are operating as a home daycare with fewer than 10, with fewer than 10 children, is yes, that I accurate? Yes, I have 10, correct. That was, that was I, I have one question as well. Um, how many staff would would um, are involved in the operation of the daycare? Right now, it's currently myself, and then I have a full time worker that's there with me at this time. Okay, thank you. What are the typical ages? Uh, right now, I am licensed from six weeks to twelve years of age. Okay, and do you have? Sleeping areas in case somebody, I guess all the, it says 24 children. And what if, how many of them would be there overnight? Overnight, it would only be up to probably 12 to 15 children overnight because of the state regulations. You can't have all the children. Um, like if I get approved for it, I can't have like 30 kids there overnight or 24 kids overnight. Okay. Go ahead. Um, thank you. I. Um, I don't know if this uh, really is part of the um, planning and zoning section, but I guess I was just wondering if the neighborhood indentures had any limits for in-home businesses. Um, I haven't really um, ran into any at this time. Um, I did have some neighbors that were very supportive of the daycare. Actually, I watched one of them that lives right next door to me that was in the daycare. So I do have a few parents that are very supportive of the daycare. May I ask an additional yeah, question? Um, are you are you expecting to do any sort of remodeling of the home interior in any way or keep the home in its current state? Um, the home will stay at its current state because when I purchased the home uh, back in January, a lot of the uh, work was done over according to the state regulations. So I already had did a lot of the work. Uh, the only thing that I would change um, would be the backyard for us, the fencing, because I will put a new fence up there. Okay. So new fencing yes. for in, in compliance with state requirements for, yes. for child care. Anyone else? I have a question Hello. about the drop off pickup hmm. um, situation. You currently with your 10, um, 10 children there, you haven't had any issues with drop off or pickup. Um, when you increase that to 24 to 30 students, um, how do you anticipate that drop off and pick up to change? And, um, you know, do the parents park and bring the kids in and where would they be uh, parking? If, the four spaces, I assume that's for um, employees or staff? The, the one that's in the garage will be basically my parking space and then the one for the staff. And then um, it's, you can hold, I think it's two in the driveway and then 
Um, I think it was one in the front, and then they said I can also apply for a waiver, so like almost a total of five cars. Um, for us to drop off time, the uh, drop off time is basically cut off is at 9 a.m. So they can't drop off at the 9 a.m. Um, in a facility. And for the most part, even with the 10 kids, um, the parents usually drop off from um, 6.30 to 8 o'clock. So it's not like all of them drop off at the same time. They kind of like scattered out a little bit. Okay. okay, anyone else? See none, we thank you, appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. At this time, is there anyone representing a group or an individual who would like to speak in favor of this petition? <laughs> I'm not sure. I just want to speak. I don't have any favor or not. Okay, come on. Okay. Thank you. So I, hi, Lashana. I, yeah. So I know Lashana. Um, we're actually the commercial property that she, like the commercial property that was shown there. The would retail. you state your name for the record? Oh, I'm sorry, Ellen Pimentel. Um, so there was a picture shown of the retail commercial property that we butt up against her. So I'm here just to make sure about the fencing. Um, that's it. I just want to make sure we're on the same page with the fencing because right now the fencing is not secure. Right. right. And I just want to make, I mean, we're not against it. It seems like a great thing. I just want to make sure that the fencing does, we get that resolved. Look, you can discuss it with her then. Yeah, I didn't know, like, you know, if you all, you know, had to put that in the plans or, you know, whatever, but. Not yet. Gotcha. But we'll, okay, we can talk about that, but that's okay. it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to speak in favor? Anyone like to speak in opposition or with concern? Seeing no one, I don't think we need rebuttal. So we'll take a show of hands of those in favor of this petition. Those in favor? You can vote. What do you got? Seven. Eight. But the records show eight. Those opposed are with concerns. But the records show none. And that concludes this hearing. Thank you. Next, we'll go to PC 30 23, Maloney Huddleston. All right, PC 30 23, Melanie Huddleston is a request from the R5 and FP R5 to C8 and FP C8. So that is the floodplain uh, districts for 2.25 acres located on the east side of Halls Ferry Road, approximately 200 feet north of Capitol Drive. Again, this site is located in North County and to your right is the aerial with the site outlined in red. Again, this site is uh, surrounded by primarily single family residences um, with a couple churches and auto care facilities more towards the south. <clears throat> Here's just a larger aerial, again, with the site in question outlined in red. This is looking east on the public hearing sign. This is looking east at the property in its entirety. This is looking east at the current signage on the site. This is looking north at the former signage on the site. This is looking west across Halls Ferry Road. This is looking south down Halls Ferry Road. This is looking north along Halls Ferry Road. This is looking north at the adjacent property. This is looking east along the property. And this is the northern part of the track. This is looking east at the parking lot in the back. This is looking east at the property. This is looking west onto the back of the building. This is looking northwest further along that back of the building. This is looking west. We are now on the southern part of the property line. 
This is looking south at the adjacent uh, neighbor. This is again looking at that same uh, southern neighbor. And you can see Halls Ferry Road. And we'll have the petitioner. Okay, thank you. Petitioner? This button, you'll point it at that door. It's a little finicky tonight, so okay. it should be weird. Okay. Hi, my name is Melanie Huddleston. And I started off with a quote. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Walt Disney quoted that, and I thought that was suitable for tonight's presentation because I went back and forth with the Department of Planning, and I figured out that I needed to do their way and get started. So that's why I'm here today. Uh, 10212 Halls Ferry Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136, St. Louis County Department of Planning, Public Hearing, Presentation, and Proposal. This is presented by myself, Melanie Huddleston, and those are my credentials. I'm a nurse, uh, adult gerontology nurse practitioner. The outline for tonight, I can't see up there very well, so I'm going to use my own papers. The outline for tonight is I'm going to give you a little bit about my background. There's an introduction, a preliminary site plan development, photo gallery, uh, more of 10212 Halls Ferry Road, the projected use, projected changes, welfare of the people, staff, and then there's a summary. I am a registered nurse. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, I am a registered nurse. I graduated from St. Louis Community College back in uh, 1994. I've since then uh, obtained a bachelor's and a master's degree. The master's in nurse practitioner's uh, certification was just obtained this year. I uh, own home community-based services. Uh, one is, well, first of all, I worked in the operating room for 25 years. And before I be, uh, became an entrepreneur, uh, one of the home community-based services, home care, and that's been since 2013, so that's been 10 years. Agape Community Health Care celebrated 10 years this year. And I've also worked in home health uh, for six years before starting my own business and that extended the home community birth-based services with an adult daycare since 2017, dubbed Freedom Day Center, that's currently located at 3309 Merrimack. The hours for Agape Community Healthcare is 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday, and from Freedom Day Center, it's 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. The introduction is 10212 Halls Ferry Road in St. Louis County, Missouri is a commercial building built in 1965. It was built for a mortuary or for funeral use, funeral home use. It was last used as a Bible school and bookstore for a religious complex and a charitable organization. I am planning with the authorization of St. Louis County Department of Planning to use it for an adult daycare and medical office. The preliminary site plan development. Here you see my application to change the zoning. Um, 10212 is currently zoned residential and I'm trying to get it zoned commercial. That's just your application that you see there. And then the survey that was mandated. So there's the survey, Marler, Marler Company, I guess, did that. And the narrative for the survey follows that. I, if I read it, I won't know what I'm reading because I'm a nurse. And then the site plan. And so the site plan was very interesting because the aerial shots that you see over to your left and then the vicinity 
uh, picture of the location and then the actual site plan that's a little larger there, they're all synced and they look all the same shape. So I say, okay, so we're on track there because I don't know much about a site plan. I am a nurse. I was told to put parking calculations on there and the parking calculations are as follows. The adult dairy care only can have, we're only authorized to have 20 participants at one time. So with the parking calculations, um, three parking spaces are needed, plus four parking spaces for the staff. So 83 parking spaces available minus seven yields 76 more for use. That's enough about the site plan. And I have some photos of the building. So the, the owners before I bought the building had used it. It was San Francisco uh, Temple. They used it for Bible school and they used it for a bookstore. So we have since then taken the Bible uh, sign off the building. The photo gal gallery, there is the front of the building and the back of the building. What you saw before, there is an aerial picture um, which you saw before as well, the same shape. And then there are some um, drone aerial pictures as well. Looks like one is perpendicular, it's 90 degrees right on top of the building. The other one looks like it's to the south, about 45 degrees. And then this one looks like it's 30 to, to 45 degrees from the east and showing the front of the building as well. Details. So more of 10212 Halls Ferry Road. The exterior has 6,800 square feet. It's, it's 6,800 square feet on 2.25 acres of land. It has 83 asphalt parking spaces that are striped. Eight of those 83 are marked handicap. It has a very small landscape. It has five security parking for parking lot lamps that Amron UE put up turnaround parking in the front with enter and exit signs. It has five entry exit doors and two parking pavilions. The interior, uh, upper level, two large parlors with large petitions, makes four large rooms if needed with separate entry and exit doors. It has a lobby area, two other spaces for offices, kitchens or a quiet room, and two ADA bathrooms. The lower level has a lounge, conference room, office, storage, and it has five toilets, two stalls, three for women and two for men. The projected use, H home, home, HCBS stands for Home Community Based Services. Uh, the adult daycare contracted with the state of Missouri to take care of 20 individuals at one given time. There is an ample space at 10212 Halls Ferry Road to do so successfully. Home community-based services, again, is in-home service and consumer-directed services contracted with the state of Missouri and Veterans Affairs to manage care for the elderly and disabled persons in their homes. And there is ample space at the building to do so successfully. And their medical office, self-care clinic and medical clinic, the nurse practitioner and or registered nurse collaborates with a physician in the state of Missouri to provide medical and aesthetic needs. And there's ample space at the building to do that as well, so successfully. The projected changes, the building is sound. It was sound when I bought it. It just needed fresh paint and new floors. And the electrical box, St. Louis County, um, I, the building guy came over and said we needed to change that and we changed it. If you look up there, you see the fresh paint. It was green and yellow, now it's white. And then there's our um, contractor changing the electrical box there. And there's the green and yellow and there's the white. There are the floors, the green carpet came up. Uh-oh, do I go back? There you go. So welfare of the people. 
As a nurse and an advocate for preventing disease and promoting health, it is keen and paramount that community programs are available for our aging and disabled population. Home community-based services are already designed by the state authorities, Division of Health and Senior Services, to assist with the growing number of people who need help in their homes or those who need social and psychosocial interactions to sustain, thrive. This is what we are asking to continue to do at 10212 Halls Ferry Road. Home community-based service agencies and adult daycares not only provide care to its communities, but also provide jobs. Our agencies are expecting to grow in this new area, which would yield more jobs for caregivers, home health aides, CNAs, LPNs, RNs, and office personnel. Home community-based service agency are also great resources for those in need of assistance with general lifetime welfare, including utilities, rent, food, diapers, et cetera. One can usually find a list of these uh, resources in any of these offices all over the city. There's a no skid floors, electrical box, and we're going to our team. We already have a team because we're already in business. The owner and director of both the in-home and consumer directed uh, freestanding home agency is myself, Melanie Huddleston. Bryce Huddleston is the overseer. Casey Penny is the manager of the home health. Wendy Kemp Williams is the manager and director of the adult daycare. Kenneth Buckner is our chef. Sometimes he, we have to use him as an attendant. And Oliver Blair is the driver, and we use him also as the attendant. Now, Melanie Huddleston, uh, Casey Penny, and Wendy Kemp Williams are blood relatives. Kenneth and Oliver are very close friends. And of course, Bryce is my husband, so he'll just help us. The summary here. The plan is to build a refuge using home community-based services for people who are elderly, disabled, lonely, or mentally impaired. Planning to build a safe space for elderly, disabled, lonely, and the mentally impaired population is much needed. 10212 Hallsbury Road can be one of these spaces in St. Louis County. Let's continue to keep our community safe. And thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Questions, anyone? Yes, yeah, well, <clears throat> I didn't notice if you had any fencing around the place. And my, my reason for asking that, <clears throat> if somebody that has a mental disorder should get out of the building. They can't, they, they can't. cannot. No, they're watched close, very closely. We've been on uh, 3309 Merrimack for six years. We have not had one escape. They can't, they're watched closely and they really can't get out. The, they, they, we follow them. We escort them to the bathroom, the kitchen's locked down. Everything's pretty much secure. So no, we kind of know what we're doing with two nurses, yes. Do you have any plans for any type of fencing around? Anything? No. Okay. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, transitioning this, uh, zoning from mm -hmm. residential to uh, commercial. Yes. Would probably require some site proof fencing between this facility and the residential homes. Okay. And, and I'm listening. Other, and other, so we'd like to know what your plans are to buffer that. Okay. okay. So with your advice, which I'm taking very seriously here, if fencing is something that is required or you think is needing, I can put a fence up. The, we've had a survey to tell us, you know, where the property starts and sure. begins and ends. So we can put a fence up. But however, I personally don't think it's necessary. The place is so big. It's, it's large. Yeah. If it's, it's for buffering between commercial and residential. Okay, not, so not to keep people in or out. Oh, okay. It, it's it's just a requirement in C eight. Okay, so. so to the south of us, there's a home that was once part of the property that was the the building and that home were one. One it was two different parcels, but it was one. So the, if it was a mortuary owned that home. 
but when I bought it, it wasn't part of the, the sale. So it is a home, it's very small. Uh, looking north, that is commercial. So on this side is commercial. Now, if you're saying put a fence up there, if that's required, I have no problem doing that. I have no problem doing it at all. Okay. And, so, and commercial has certain uh, things that we would look at in terms of condition and, and, and turn it over into commercial. Uh, what are your plans for the parking lot uh, resurfacing and things? Okay, like yes, sir. Glad you asked because it is a commercial building with 83 parking spaces that is zoned in residential. Even though if you go south and it's west on New Halls, on not New Halls, but Halls Ferry Road, you see, and we've done our research, there are some C8. Uh, commercial buildings and businesses that already exist. But the parking lot, because it just looks nice anyway to have it repaved or sprayed, at the time we are planning to do that. We want to do that. Yes, that is in the plan to have it all uh, the asphalt resprayed and all the stripes renewed. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Another alternative you may want to consider if you don't need 83 parking spots is to not replace it, but do away with it. Not to replace it, but do what I'm listening. Well, how, what, what's the required? Well, this will not have, this will not have a particularly large parking requirement. So one of the options I believe is that you could remove some of the parking in effect. You can and, and pull out some of that grass. pavement. And, and place it and replace it with? Grass. With, with, with green grass. space, if that was your choice. Oh, I see. Okay. I mean, it's, that just as an option. Okay. As, as an option, there's ways that you can do that and still stay within the C8 okay. ordinance. Okay. I want to write it down. Okay. Yes. Anyone else? May I ask a yeah. question? Yeah. Do you intend to have any clinical services? Like, do you intend to have patients come to see um, clinicians at this facility? Or is this more like your administrative office for your home for your home health um, practice? It is not. It is for the public, but it's aesthetics. It's a, so I currently, at one time, I owned a medical spa before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So the pandemic kind of wiped me out, but I'm, I'm trying to bid it. So I was, while we were in our homes, uh, it was required for us to be at home. I actually went to back to school and got my nurse practitioners. And then when I come out, I found out that the state of Missouri has to have a collaborating with phys physician. So after I passed my certification, I got that. Now I'm ready to put it back up. But it's strictly aesthetics. It's not for managing diabetes, hypertension, high, uh, thyroid. None of, I, I, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. So no. No. And may I ask, just when you say aesthetics, can mm -hmm. you, because I may not, I may not understand exactly what you mean by that. Can you tell me what that, what that means for you? So uh, anti-aging Botox. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's just one big one. That's, I am a certified Botox nurse injector, but I haven't done it and since I've been um, in school. So I have a collaborating physician who's going to refresh me and that's it. And those are usually done with the patient sitting down. Yeah, it's yeah. not a big deal. <laughs> okay. You know. I, so. think, I think I have a clearer picture. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Okay. If, if I may, I just yeah. pulled up your website and if it would be helpful, some of the services listed are hair loss and retention, uh, microneedling, dermal fillers, Botox, um, microdermabrasion. I think the med spa use is, is, is a yeah, helpful I description think, as well. Yeah. Yeah. You describe, I, I, yeah. yeah. It's not anything like I say hypertension diabetes no way that's not uh, that's not fun <laughs> <laughs> thank you you're welcome anyone else seeing none we thank you okay thank you it. thank you at this time is there anyone representing a group or an individual who would like to speak in favor seeing none anyone representing a group or an individual who'd like to speak in opposition or with concern. Seeing no one, we do not need a rebuttal on this one as, as well. We'll take a show of hands 
of those in favor of this petition? Those in favor? I see four. Let the record show four. Those opposed are with concerns. Let the record show none. And that concludes this hearing. Thank you. Next item will be uh, PC 31-23. Good evening, PC 31-23. Natibia Boyd Wells is a request for a conditional use permit in the R3 residence district for 20.62 acres located on the south side of Redmond Road, approximately 550 feet east of Talbot Court. <laughs> This site again is located in North County and as you can see on the right, the aerial the site is outlined in red. This site is again uh, surrounded primarily by single family homes. Um, there is an assisted living center located to the west and then there is athletic fields and then a another child care center, which the commission may recall from R&B Rising Star uh, which was a conditional use permit 24-22, um, as well as Tullman Elementary School and another church. This is just a larger aerial with the site outlined in red. This is looking south at the public hearing sign. This is looking north along across Redmond Road. This is looking west down Redmond Road. This is looking east up Redmond Road this is looking south on the secondary parking lot on the site. This is south in that secondary parking lot. You can kind of see the football field. Staff was not able to get out into that area, but this was the best we could get for you guys today. This is looking at east onto the building. This is looking north up to Redmond Road. This is the curb cut from the secondary parking lot on the site. This is looking east through the site. This is looking east onto those athletic fields in that uh, neighboring child care center. This is looking east at the fields again. This is looking west um, going through the site from the other direction. This is looking southwest onto the building. This is looking west onto the building in the loading dock. This is looking west in that uh, front yard where you can see the former school's electric sign in their buffer yard. This is looking north. This is the uh, curb cut located on the eastern side of the property. So there are two curb cuts um, going into the main lot. This is looking west from that second curb cut. And this is looking east from that second curb cut. We'll have the petitioner. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay. So it's this button and that you kind of hit it at that door. <laughs> It's a little slow, so. Thanks. Hello, my name is Natavia Boyd Wells. My company name is Lee Santos Healing Hands Learning Center. We specialize in giving services to children with special needs. Uh, before we go into the slide, 1720 Redmond Road was formerly Trinity High School. Myself and my husband purchased it from the Arch Dynasty a few months ago. We are looking to turn this facility into a daycare slash learning center only for special need kids. Should have blew this up. <laughs> The purpose of our learning center for special need kids is to bridge the gap that we have right now between the Department of Mental Health 
and Hazelwood School Districts in North County. A lot of our parents have nowhere to take their children that has special needs. How do we know this? Uh, we did an extensive research and I'm also an owner of a home health care company that only gives services to special need kids. <laughs> so with us doing our research, a lot of parents will advocate that once we leave for those four hours, they have nowhere else to take them. When they're out of school, they have nowhere else to take them. So opening up this large facility, as you guys may know, Trinity is very large. It is 133,000 square feet. It does consider 40 classroom and I want to say 10 bathrooms, 10 restrooms. We do have a football field. We do have a baseball field. As you guys saw in the beginning, our baseball field is not gated off just yet, but it will be gated off as well as the front of our facility. It will have gates. What the gates will look like is one car will enter, the gate will close. It does a count. The next car will come up and the gate will then open for them. We are taking extreme measures for our children with special needs. All of our classrooms will be equipped with cameras inside and outside of our facility. Our mission is to build a state of art facility. This state of art facility for our children, for us, it looks like all the learning materials that they will need. We have had the pleasure and honor to be hosted with Washington University School in Medicine. They will be coming in as a partner with us, as well as BJC. So what our staff lacks in with STEM training, these other individuals will have the correct qualifications for all of our children to thrive. And I know that's pretty small for you guys to read. Overview of our facility. As I stated at first, it does have 40 classrooms. These are very large classrooms. We are not going in doing any renovation to this building. The only thing that our contractor and architect will be doing is whatever cosmetic to get it back up to code for St. Louis County. And of course, throwing all colors over everywhere. We also have a residential side, if you guys are aware of that. Um, we do have the residential manager that is a social worker that's going to be over that site for us. That site would only hold about 10 kids, 30 days in respite for state. So when St. Louis County has nowhere to take their fostering kids, that side of our facility will be open up for them. It is locked away from the childcare side. What I mean by that, it, it has double plated doors that are locked from both sides. Um, our contractor will then also go and put key magnetics on our doors, if I'm saying that right, where they would need a car to get in and out of it. I forgot to click it. My apologies, guys. <laughs> As far as our classrooms, we will have individual IEP classroom, a speech therapy classroom, occupational, physical therapy, behavior, social skills, a sensory room, a music room. We are adapting all equipment um, that Washington University is providing our company for each of our classrooms. All of our staff's education comes from STEM. STEM is a program that the Department of Mental Health as well as secondary education offers daycare teachers to qualify them to be a daycare teacher. 
All of our teachers will go through that process as well as a federal and state background check. What that looks like is we will be doing fingerprinting, ID cards every 60 days on the fingerprints to make sure that we are keeping our children safe, the ones that are verbal and nonverbal. The supporting services that we have got, it has been overwhelming from the individuals that we purchased our school from the Arch Dynasty. Um, they are closing down their schools in St. Louis. It feels like every other month now, and they have always reached out to us to get supplies from them. And the technology that we've received, which was um, a couple weeks ago, the Arch Dynasty donated us 5,000 tablets for our nonverbal kids to speak in. Uh, Washington University, they're coming in with a lot of their gadgets as well uh, for us to be as capable to care for our children. And we are at the end. Again, my name is Natavia Boyd-Wells. I am the owner and founder of Lee Santos Healing Hands Learning Center for Special Need Kids. Okay, thank you. Questions? Can you just remind me of how many children will be there? And is this all like an all-day school, or do they come after school, or how does that, how does that work? So it is from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. for the daycare kids. Then for the after school kids, it will be from 5 to 6.30. So when they get out, don't they get off school earlier than 5? Or that's not how that works? Some special need kids, no ma'am. Okay. Some of them have other courses that they may go to if they chose not to do a speech or occupational therapy with our center, then most of them conduct all of their <clears throat> services after school. And how many, how many children would that be? So we were licensed for 800 kids. Wow. Yes. Um, we just closed our waiting list yesterday. Uh, our waiting list was up to 1,201 families that has already applied from St. Louis uh, as well as Illinois. But our cap off <laughs> with the daycare was 800. But speaking up on our staff, we're only going to do 500 because I'm only hiring 180 individuals. So you're going to have 180 staff for 500 yes. kids? Yes. Wow, it's a big project. I have a very large team that's behind me and supporting me, so I'm not alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you're going to have in house um, living also for yes ma'am we're doing for uh, respite for foster homes. Mm -hmm. and yes. how many children will that be I believe that is 10 that ten. is 10 can I allow her to answer for those right. questions yeah, because that's her <laughs> hello my name is Michelle Wendon and I'll be overseeing the uh, residential for and providing respite care for children entering foster care our placement disruptions um, for the state of Missouri. Now, originally, I was thinking this had more to do with um, being a part of the Hazelwood School District, but it sounds like it's a lot bigger than that. Correct. You have any tie with Hazelwood School District or special? Yes, we do. We will be picking up. I'm sorry. Yes, we will be picking up their children uh, with special needs after school. Okay. Um, we were just announced from the secondary of education to be the largest in Missouri if you guys do allow us to open in this particular facility. We will be in the largest in Missouri as well as the largest in Illinois because we will be able to take Illinois kids as well. So what's the overall age range? We have to stop at 15 for the daycare. Okay. Yes. That's a state. That, yes, sir. That's a requirement by the state. Got it. Anyone else? Kept How many parking spots do you have per employee? Per employee. <laughs> 
Well, I have 170 parking spots. So only 143 of them would be used for the children since it's six every one, I believe. So I didn't write this plan, but my contractor is here and he is flooring in this. So can I have him to answer these questions? <laughs> Oh yes, we're we're well over the the limit of the parking spots. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Okay. Anyone else? See none. We thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It. At this time, is there anyone representing a group or an individual who would like to speak in favor? Come on down. Hi, Patrick Collations. Um, I'm the contractor she was uh, alluding to. So uh, there, there should be sufficient parking. And as far as the building overall, um, she's not modifying the footprint of the current building. The current building as it stands, the footprint itself, the usage of the rooms or the cafeteria is remaining the same. She is upgraded and bringing them up to code. Um, and uh, based on our inspections, um, one, pump is not as far as the fire suppression system which is obviously fire and safety is crucial it's adamant um it's being uh completely it's being changed one pump in the residential area is not functioning correctly but obviously this will all be tested prior to uh, anywhere close near opening so okay. but if there's any other questions pertaining to the building itself or the footprint i would be happy to answer it no all right. okay all thank right you. thank you thank you Anyone else like to speak in favor? Seeing none, you, are you in favor? Or? All right. Again, Ellen Pimentel, as luck would have it, second um, business tonight. We actually live across the street from, from this will go in. So not only did the one earlier, we have the commercial property that you know is behind it. Oh, we have a house right across the street from Trinity. So my question is, and it's pretty simple. Um, are there going to be any, you're talking about foster kids. Are there going to be any kids that stay there? Um, are the kids that stay there going to be under 15 as well? Okay, we should, you can come back for a rebuttal after everybody is done and then answer. So I, I just kind of wanted to know the age of the kids that were going to be there full time. And if there was any like behavior disorders or any like, um, I don't, I want to say like criminal background or any sort of detention or that type of thing, are they just, you know, just, uh, kids from through the system uh, being in the neighborhood. I, I, I just want to wonder if there's any safety concerns that we have to be for the neighbors living there. Okay. That's well, it. She can answer that when she comes back up. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak in opposition or with concern? Seeing none, you want to come back up? This is getting recorded, so we want to stay with the mics. Hello, Michelle Wendon. Uh, the residential side will host children 10 and under, uh, so no criminal background checks. I don't think that's a safety concern. Um, and these are children, these are foster children, so uh, they will be there 30 days or under um, and just awaiting placement. Okay. Questions, anyone? Okay, we thank you. At this time, we'll take a show of hands of those in favor of this petition. Keep them up for a few. Let the record show 11. Those opposed are with concerns. Let the record show none. And that concludes this hearing. Thank you. Next, we've got uh, PC 32-23 and 33-23, the Islamic Society 
of Greater St. Louis. Good evening. Before you is PC 32 and 33-23, the Islamic Society of Greater St. Louis Corporation, requesting for a change in zoning from R3 to R1 residence, residence district with a conditional use permit in R1 residence district on a track size of 5.39 acres located at the south side of Parker Road, approximately 130 feet east of Rosemeads. As you can see on the county contest map, the subject site is located in North County, and by the right of the screen is the subject site, which is outlined in the thick red, which is actually a portion of a larger tract of land that is in dashed red. This is the land use map of the subject site. And by the east of the subject site, we have multiple family residences and some commercial development. By the north, we have res single family residences, and by the south, so we have single family residences. By the west of this site, we have single family residences, some institutional land use, and more of commercial um, development across Losha Road. And this is the larger area map of the subject site. This is to the south, showing the public hearing notice. This is to the south, showing the subject site. Further south, inside this tract. East of the subject site. East along Parker Road, not across Parker Road. This is also showing not across Parker Road. And this is showing the western property line. And west along, uh, along Parker Road. And then. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, how are you all doing? My name is Tony Alcom. I represent the Islamic side of Greater St. Louis. Our attorney is supposed to be here, but he's on vacation. He's in Florida today. But we have our engineer. He's here, Mr. Steve. Um, so, uh, we start with this presentation. This is uh, this rendering shows uh, the main entrance to the cemetery. This is our plan. Uh, we're gonna have a sign. Of course, this is gonna say it's a private uh, cemetery. It's uh, because it's uh, for our community, basically. Uh, requesting we're here today to request uh, for uh, rezoning and change of conditional use permit. This is another rendering here to show the parking lot. We were told that we need a really good sized parking lot with a minimum of 25 spaces. This is the actual conditional use permit that we uh, submitted, Mr. Steve submitted. This is the portion of the, and highlighted in red, uh, like it shows it's a 5.39 acres of lot, this is the whole lot to includes the parking lot and the driveway and uh, this is a legal description. I don't know if you guys want me to read it to you guys. <laughs> okay, um, I think I can't see much here, but let me, I, I can't see really well, but I'll go through my phone, try to read this for there you There is guys. a hard copy uh, there on the podium as well, if you want. Yes, 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 thank you, I see that. Okay, thank you so much. It's great. All right. 
<clears throat> well, project information, North County Memorial Garden Cemetery. This is going to be the name of the cemetery. Uh, where is it located? 1930 Parker Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63038. The school district will, uh, is Hazelwood. The fire district is Spanish Lake. We're under contract with uh, 3M Real Estate, and their address is 4006 Summerfield Parkway, St. Charles, Missouri. Uh, the contract is under the name of the Islamic Society of Greater St. Louis. Uh, the address of the, the center, the Islamic Society, it's on 8945 Dunn Road. Uh, the current zoning is R3 residential. Our proposed rezoning R1 with the CUP. Can you click, click the slide? I'm sorry. Can you click the slide? Oh, whoa, I'm breathing. I'm yeah, sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, uh, the proposed rezoning R1 with the CUP. The area of the site that we mentioned earlier is going to be 5.39. Existing use is just vacant land right now. Proposed use cemetery. Uh, we don't have any intention of building, having any buildings on the site at all. Uh, no buildings are proposed. Existing landscape will be reserved, most of it very much. Uh, no utilities will be installed, like no electric, no sanitary service, gas or water. Boundary and topographic information obtained from available records. Uh, the plan to have 25 parking spaces with two accessible, one of them a regular standard uh, parking space with a van uh, this is this parking, you know, these two parks, uh, the parking space will be uh, used for funeral attendees and workers. Some information about the community center. Uh, it was funded in 2011. In 2011, uh, we started with 500 members. Now we grew up to 1,700 members. And the location we mentioned earlier, 8945 Dunn Road uh, in Hazelwood, 63042. The service is there. What uh, the facility provides, community and social support, food pantry, outreach programs, social services, support for the needy, for the community, the surrounding community, basically, and, and the community. Education, full-time, we have a full-time school and a Sunday school. Religious services, guidance, burial, and marriage. Um, our mission committed to serving and uplifting our community daily through diverse services. Well, there's the buffer zone, like you guys see, of uh, trees, mass trees. Um, I have to, I, I have summarized this actually. I don't want to go through the whole thing here. The trees will create privacy, uh, will hide the cemetery from neighbors and people passing by, maintaining privacy, noise reduction. They help reduce noise for the cemetery, causing less disturbance to nearby houses. Ecological benefits, the trees create nature habitat for wildlife and plants making the cemetery a peaceful place for both nature and people. The looks, the tree makes areas more beautiful and help the cemetery fit with its surroundings. Um, this is basically the buffer zone. We have a lot of big massive trees all uh, sides, the west side, south side, and the east side, if you look at this image. Um, also, the necessity of, of uh, I don't know which slide is this. Uh, yeah, this is slide 10. Okay, why we need the cemetery? Our community urgently need it. 
uh, due to the fact the limited space, the current cemetery that we've using, uh, we're, we're using Laura Hill Memorial Gardens running out of, of burial spaces for us. Uh, cost effective, we plan to reduce funeral cost from the national median of 7,000 848 an average burial cost to 2,500, easing financial stress for our community members. Uh, Long-term need, we have been looking for suitable land for close to seven and a half years, sh uh, showing the importance of this project. Uh, ample space, the proposed 5.39 acre site located at the on Parker Road allow for respectful development. Future planning, the cemetery will serve our community for generations, ensuring a respectful resting place for the future. Community control, a community-led cemetery allows to manage to manage it in line with our values uh, and reduce expense. Overall importance, establishing a new cemetery is vital for meeting our community long-term needs, honoring our loved ones, and supporting community well-being. We're closing this remarks, we are dedicated to honor our religious responsibility, showing respect for those who have passed away and offering comfort to those who have lost their loved ones following Islamic traditions. Okay. Let's see where we are here. Well, there's necessity for a new cemetery, Islamic community. It's just right to, relig right to religious facilities. Equality, just as other faiths have a space for their unique traditions. Our Islamic community requires a cemetery that aligns with our religious laws and customs. Support, we are seeking understanding and support from local authorities and community members to establish cemetery that serves our growing needs. Closing, we mentioned that already. We just summarized this, this slide very much. Let me just go. Our objective is just, uh, like I said, we, we want to just rezone the cemetery and hopefully we'll get uh, everything approved. Uh, the financial benefits, we mentioned that, uh, the, the cost again, uh, the average burial in national 2021 was about uh, 7848 on average burial and uh, uh, current average burial cost. Expected cost new cemetery 2500 this is uh, will will be a saving of five thousand three forty eight per burial, um, and we're running out of space in the Royal Laurel Hill Cemetery. A grave capacity. Like I mentioned earlier. 5.39 acres, the land, the standard grave size is average 24 square feet. And each grave with a space around it will occupy 36 square feet. We can fit close to 1,200 graves per acre, in theory. After accounting for other uses for the land, parking lot, driveways, walkway baths, and tree removal, some of the, the, the trees that we have, which some will be removed like uh, as needed. Um, we are left with 4.411 acres uh, for graves. This will leave us with, uh, we can fit total of 5,337, 337 graves. Phase one, and this is our plan to develop 50 grave sites. This is phase one. This is the site development. Uh, <clears throat> this is the old one, I think. No, it's the same one. 
as a part of our commitment to maintaining this uh, CERN and re respectful ambience of the cemetery, we are embarking on enhan enhancement project that will include the installation of truthfully designed walkways. Uh, this is the second slide, will give you a better picture of it. And we're gonna remove some of the, the tree mess and clean it up to where it's gonna be nice and covering some of the, the grave sections, basically. Um, and we're gonna maintain the landscape in nature of beauty. Okay, this is uh, that slide. Just wanna give you a quick note, information about the grave sites themselves, they won't be owned by individually uh, of the de deceased, by the owned by the deceased hires or assigns, and instead the ownership remains with the mosque. Typically, a funeral at a cemetery sees an attendance of 20, 25 people. The burial of uh, ceremonies are general, generally short, lasting around 30 minutes. Yeah lasting around 30 minutes. Then everyone leaves uh, the cemetery. They don't uh, produce constant traffic like other commercial businesses. Mentions, I don't wanna mention is, you know, maybe quick trip, apartment buildings or office centers or subdivisions. Uh, for the community burial usually b begins at 2, 2 p.m. and concludes by 3 3.30 with the most. Uh, however, they can vary, but uh, definitely is not gonna occur in the morning or in the evening. That's standard. I mean, that's that's the way we've been burying in the other cemetery uh, that we run out of space. Basically, those are just left images. Uh, this image of the site, the site development, the parking, a lot, the driveway. And I mentioned this earlier that we were planning to have uh, 25 uh, total parking spaces, 23 regular, two AD accessible, one standard and one for a van. And there's gonna be an aisle between them, separate the two parking spots. Some other images of the handicap. This is an image looking north <laughs> towards uh, Parker Road. This is the entrance of the cemetery. Another image showing the parking lot looking from the east to the west. And this is an actual picture of the site from Parker Road. Do you guys have any questions? Okay. Questions? Yeah, I'm just, just curious. Uh, yes, sir. Without any utilities being planned, uh, does that suggest there uh, obviously not going to be any lighting or security or? Really, it's a cemetery. You know, most of the cemeteries, even the existing one that we currently bury in our loved ones in, they don't have lights. They, they really don't. I mean, they have a, a driveway, maybe. Uh, what is it, four or five feet, or maybe six feet, sorry, six feet road. And they don't, really don't have no lights, no, even no, no walkway paths, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Uh, and that's the, the, you know, we're not planning to have lights in there. There's really no need, yeah, no I'm water. Just curious no, all. not really, no, I mean, you don't need it. Just like you have your own lot and you have a loved one that passed away and you want to bury him in your backyard. Uh, I mean, you know what I'm saying? So it's, we don't need lights. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if we need it. Uh, we're not going to do any burial at night. He wasn't suggesting that you needed it. He was just asking. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, he yeah. Was just asking. Yeah, no, no, no. Do you, do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, yes, there are two lots. Now, is one, so the cemetery is the com combination of the two lots, but only one of them needed a zoning change? Is that the situation? The, the, the situation is we, we really, we can't use all of it as a cemetery. We, we, you know what I mean? You know, 5.39 acres is more than enough for us right now. 
Okay. So we decided to leave the other, the rest of it as is, you know, not rezoned, leave it at R3. For future, if we need to expand, maybe we'll come back again okay. and, and ask you guys to allow us to expand it. Yes, sir. What type of trees, because the ones you're showing in the finished product are different than these trees, are they of course, going I mean, to lose their leaves in the wintertime? And... Uh, well, these are actually, no. If you go there now, this picture just was, recently, you know, not too long. Uh, I mean, sorry. Uh, there were some pictures that Mr. Malik took a video. And if you look at it, I mean, they're they're not going to lose their leaves. Not I mean, these, are they not evergreen? These not these type of trees. They're what type of trees are they? I don't know, but but I I know they are going to create a, a good buffer zone on on this all sides for, for of the land. Uh, I, I guess what I'm asking is if they lose their leaves in the fall, it's not going to be such a good buffer because it's going to be all open. Now in the spring and that when they start leafing out and that, that that's why I was asking are they cedars pines or what that's a good question honestly I didn't know I didn't know I, I couldn't uh, but I saw it's a such a thick ma uh, massive trees there but I don't know I, okay. I don't know the other time. question I have is how do you plan on watering the grave sites to reestablish the sod watering <clears throat> the grave. well I mean if you're gonna once you got a bare grave there, you're going to have to reseed it or sod it or something. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll probably have to bring, I don't know, That's going to be some, contracted out. some contracted out of, of we have contracts that they're going to dig the graves. They're going to, you know, close them, open them and close them. And I'm sure they're going to have the water, whatever they need with them. You know, they'll have their own trucks with the, with the tank in the back. If, if they ever need water, I don't know if there's any need for it to be honest with you I don't know I mean we we've seen a lot of burials I mean we haven't seen that these guys is required to hose any water I mean uh, I mean or need water there do you have that now I, yeah we have a we have a burial site that we're running out of space yeah, sure you I know, know what but I, mean? I guess I'm wondering is there water there now do they reseed no, it or no, they no. just put the side back and Bro, yeah I mean, there's 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 grass. They cut it, of course. They keep it clean, but they don't water it or anything like that. They just uh, depend. They depend on the that. I just meant to reestablish it because once you've got bare dirt there, you're gonna have to plant grass seed or put sod down or something. You're not just gonna leave it bare dirt, are you? Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So, yeah. I mean, we'll we'll have that land. I mean, we'll have a landscaper to go back and take care of it. That's a, okay. that's something a part of our expense of of uh, getting into this project. You know what I'm saying? I agree with you. Yeah, I understand. I think you were saying just in case you do need water, you said you didn't need any. I really didn't need it, but I mean, uh, the, the the contractor itself or the gardener or whoever is going to go there, they, they'll they'll make arrangements to take care of that part. Yeah. You know, maybe or water it every once in a while or something. You know. Sure. Yeah, that's that's a good question, though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I visit the cemetery weekly for my family's yeah. graves, and I I know what they look like when they have just bare dirt. And it, no, no, I know we don't want it to have bare dirt. Honestly, we want it to to yeah. to preserve its 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 nice looking, uh, you know, uh, landscaping. Yes, sir. As far as maintenance, will that be done by you internally, the mosque, or is that something you'll be contracting out and how will you handle the upkeep? The upkeep, we have a big volunteer group, but most, mostly we'll have subcontractors or contractors that will bring in, you know, professionals that will take care of that, that issue. You know, by opening a grave and closing it, we'll have a, a contractor uh, to do that. For what he mentioned there, we'll have to have a gardener or maybe a landscaper, professional landscaper to come back and take care of whatever needs to be taken care of there yeah, after. I'm, I guess I'm more concerned. Ongoing maintenance, cutting the grass. Oh, no, no. We have. Both lots, right? You know, no, no. That this is, of course, this is, this is something that we have to take care of. We'll have, we'll have a contractor. We'll, we'll sign a contract with somebody to take care of that. We're not going to okay. have volunteers do it because yeah. they'll do it tomorrow <laughs> and then they forget about it. They're never going to do it. So, no, we'll have a contract, of course, with the. And, and you mentioned, Laura, is that uh, the only other 
Islamic cemetery in the area, or is that? Well, there is an Islamic cemetery. It's 45 minutes away from our location. Okay. It's, it's, it's too far. Right. And the cost, it's more, way more. It's, it, it's close to five grand to bury there. But the distance, you know, the, the, this location is about, well, to be exact, it's about 11 miles. And it's highway miles. You get on Dunn Road, uh, get on 270 east of 367. You get off that exit, and you're right there, maybe uh, two, three blocks. It's on your right hand side. It's a great location for us. You know, I looked it up on Google. Google, it's about 11, 12 minutes maximum drive, I believe. That's what it was. Thank you. Very good location, yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank we'll you so see much. Anybody else? I appreciate the question. That was not what. <laughs> Is there anyone that you're representing a group or an individual who would like to speak in favor? Uh, I forgot to mention one thing, sorry. Yeah. Must... Come on. Is here? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll let you handle that. Yes. I'll just. Thank you. Hi <laughs> there. Thank you. Go ahead and state your name for the record. So my name is uh, Donnell Malik Sims. Stay in the microphone. Yes, my name is Donnell Malik Sims, and I, too, adhere to the religion of Islam. And as a young lady said, there is some residential properties around. So what my, uh, myself and the gentleman here, Mr. Cedric Kelly, we took the liberty to uh, poll the neighbors uh, in the residential area within a uh, 350 feet radius of mm -hmm. the actual area. And we secured approximately 58 signatures of support uh, for the Memorial Garden. So the community is, in fact, uh, supportive of it. They understand that it is a private cemetery. They are very respecting of um, our goals and our designs. And of course, myself, um, you know, I may be buried there myself, so <laughs> I want it to exist. We're running, as uh, Mr. Algum said, we're running out of space, right? <laughs> so I'm going that way one day, so I may, I may need that. <laughs> okay. Questions, anyone? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate the comments. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? In favor? Oh, yeah. and so Ms. Wilson, Wilson actually has the signatures, I the do. original copies. Okay. And so there's telephone numbers, addresses, and again, it's right in the Spanish Lake area. It's, it's right. the residents. Yep. Thank you. Uh, my name is, uh, good evening, first of all. Uh, my name is uh, Khalid Amoud. I'm one of the owners of the property. I just want to uh, kind of answer your question on the buffer. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the trees are dense enough to where they create a buffer on their own. Some of those trees uh, do not lose their leaves. I do not recall the names or the species, but some of them are pine. And uh, uh, on top of having those trees that do not lose their uh, leaves, uh, the trees are dense and in, in some areas they're like 20 and 40 feet deep. So you have plenty of trees to create that buffer. Okay. Thank you. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Anybody in opposition or with concern? Good evening. Um, my name is Welton Davey. Uh, I'm actually one of the residents that is in the Hidden Lake subdivision that is adjacent to the uh, property that the cemetery will be built on. Um, I've actually lived at that property for going on 28 years now. And um, I've steadily seen my, my property value go up. Um, and I've been very appreciative. It's been a great neighborhood. Uh, my concern here is that the building of the cemetery, usually there's a decline in property value. So that that's definitely something that I'm concerned about. Um, living in North County as long as I have, I've seen a lot of economic decline. We've lost a grocery stores, Jamestown Mall. There's been a number of things that has caused economic decline in the Spanish Lake area. 
now we're talking about adding something that adds no economic value to the community. Some of the prior presentations that you had, that you've shown today, they provide some economic value to North County. That is not the case here. And it's actually going to, as for me as a property owner, I could see a decline in what has been a steady growth for me. One of the other concerns here that they did mention is that that cemetery, there's only two lanes. Parker Road is a two lane street. So the, the, as funeral processions go through, that's going to actually slow down people getting in and out of the residence. Um, he mentioned the trees. Many of the trees in the area are oak trees. So they do shed leaves regularly. So that's, an, that's another thing I, I would have to be considered. Um, I, I can't say that I'm in favor of it. I, I, I did see them when they were getting the petition of the 58 people. I saw them and I was not one of the people that was wanting to sign it because I am concerned about the loss in property value. Okay, questions, anyone? Okay, thank you, appreciate the comments. Anyone else like to speak in opposition or with concern? We only speak one time, so. Um, do you want to do rebuttal or do you want to waive? Petitioner, you, you good? Okay, at that we'll uh, waive rebuttal and we'll take a show of hands of those in favor of this petition. Let the record show five opposed or with concern. Let the record show one, and that concludes this hearing. If you, you want to come on up. So, Mr. Chairman and the board, in response to the gentleman's concerns regarding property decline, uh, homes, uh, the data shows that homes for sale in the cemeteries are not severely impacted by the proximity of the deceased and may actually sell for more. That is the current data, uh, according to uh, the real estate data that we just pulled up on the phone. So the property value does not necessarily decrease. Uh, and, and in some cases, it actually increases the value. And that's my rebuttal to the gentleman's Thank concerns. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll go on to the last item, DC 34-23, Scott Juritz. Good evening, PC 34-23, Scott Hortiz, is a request for a change in zoning from M3 to C8 Plan Commercial District for a track size of 1.51 acres located in the west of Lime Ferry Road, south of Old Lime Ferry Road. As you can see in the, in the county contest map, the subject site is located in the south county, and to the right of the screen is the subject site outlined in red. And this is a land use map. I would like to draw attention first to the subject site, which was formerly an automotive paint shop and also um, bulk of residential development across Lime Ferry Road. And this is the larger area map showing the subject site. This is West showing the public public hearing notice. Not so the existing or to the existing sign on the subject site. Not showing the um, showing the showing the showing the western property line, and to the north also showing the existing building. To the north, showing the showing the western part of the property, showing the western property line. To the east, showing the existing parking lot. To the east, showing the existing residence. To the south, along Lime Ferry Road, and to the west of the property, 
and west showing the existing trash enclosure. So let's go to the petitioner. Okay, thank you. Petitioner? Okay, thank you. Good evening. Uh, Obviously, the objective tonight, we're looking to change the zoning from... Would you state your name for the record? I'm sorry, Scott Hortiz. Thank you. Uh, change the zoning from its current M3 to uh, C8, M3 office warehouse to C8 office warehouse vehicle service. My name's Scott Hortiz. I was born and raised in St. Louis, grew up in Melville, right down the street from this building, 29 years in the automotive industry, currently live in Eureka and I ironically started my career in this exact building. Vehicle service group is who I am employed with. Madison, Indiana is their headquarters, been in business for almost 100 years now, 2,000 employees over three continents, 10 global locations. We are an innovative manufacturer of vehicle <laughs> servicing equipment. Some notable names that you may have heard of, rotary lifts, chief collision technology, worn drive lines, and a few more. This is our building site. Um, it was an automotive paint distributor. They warehoused office and did deliver paint out of there. Not a lot of retail business was done at this facility. For our operations, uh, it's, it's extremely minimal. I'm the sole employee for the most part. <laughs> we have another employee who travels. He's part-time. We have, day, I'll be there daytime. Minimal parking lot usage. We really won't have cars parked in the parking lot at all. Uh, I'm big on image, very big on image. I will keep the grass green, trees. We already are in that. I've been pecking trash up every week since we've been there. We'll be an extremely quiet and low key neighbor, almost non-existent. It'll pretty much just be a building for all due purposes that sits there and looks pretty. <clears throat> Contrary to our name, we will not be servicing vehicles there at all. Um, we build equipment to service vehicles. My main function is we have an electronic measuring system. I document the underside of cars for collision equipment. I don't do any servicing at all. All of my cars are obtained for brand new. In fact, it's extremely important. They're brand new never been in an accident and I document the underside for collision shops and basically provide a baseline zero for when your car's wrecked to bring it back to where it should be. Most of the, most of the job is photography, documenting and photography. There is a, a measuring system involved, but it's, it's non-invasive and doesn't really affect anything on the car for what we do. Minimal, minimal disassembly. They're, like I said, they're brand new cars. I have to respect these. Um, we take off under shields off the bottom and plastic covers, and that's the extent of what work is done to the vehicle. And that's, I try to get around any way of not doing that because it is a brand new car and I don't want to risk damaging a new car. <clears throat> that's pretty much it. It's uh, simple. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Questions. Sorry, Scott, should have put you first. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. It's, I end your night quicker. <laughs> so you bring vehicles to this? I bring, okay. yeah, I go pick up vehicles. And I failed to mention our traffic. I do one to two vehicles a week. So 70 to 100 a year. They'll be in. I'll bring the vehicle inside one at a time. I spend about a day and a half, two days on the actual vehicle. It's just, it's time consuming more than anything um, because I have to make sure that what I'm providing the technician is accessibility while it's wrecked and what they can get to. And then the other part of mine is providing the data for our software engineers to put in to make the actual system work. I don't know how that part works, but. I provide that information for them to write the software on. So you're working through new car dealers? 
I have relation. I worked for Mungnass family for 18 okay. years, and through that relationship, I have very a lot of relationships with principals at the other dealers. So I basically beg and plead and borrow their cars for from them, and uh, I try to turn them around within a two day period. So half of my job is the physical aspect of work of having a car there. And then the other half is the computer side, which I prefer to do at my house. So the the building is, it, like I said, it's gonna, for the most part, no one will even know anybody's there. We don't have retail, we don't have, we will warehouse some products inside. Um, we have a distributor in Fenton. It'll be their overflow mainly. I have one person that has an office in the building, but he travels 50% of the time. So it's very minimal usage at all. Um, we are, image is important. We are, we got bids to redo the parking lot and there's some landscaping that's looking a little shabby that we'd like to have freshened up. Um, but otherwise it'll stay as is. We make sure that we do keep it appealing to the eye. Sure. And good neighbors, cause I'm looking at a villa across the street. So it's gonna be important to me that it looks good. Yes, sir. When you bring in a car, are you driving that in or is it a so I trailer the car to the facility. Um, this is something that may change, but I drive it into, I'm, I'm not comfortable driving the, the openings a little bit. It's tight to bring the trailer in with a car on it. So I will drive the car in now. We are looking, this is a one change that we are looking at the building is to widen the garage door about two to three feet, just so I can swing to get it in. But we will bring the car in, but I'll also pull the trailer in afterwards, just separately. So you'll unload the car in the road? And then the parking lot, in the parking the lot. lot. Yeah, in the parking lot. It's it's actually a big parking lot. Um, we wrote for 12 spaces, and then there's still a lot of room. And there's also a dock that goes to the side of the building. So the trailer will get parked there if it doesn't get parked inside, but most of the time just for security and everything else. Because there's such limited traffic in the building i want to keep it secure so thank you how big is that building 90 100 square feet okay i can't recall if there were pictures of signage is there any existing signage or there's anything? one sign by the street and it was of the paint store but people kept stopping by wanting to buy paint so i flipped the signs around so it's just blank and what i was going to do is just put the address number is real big on that sign because I don't need anybody to know we're there for the most part. It's, I don't need an advertising. I don't, we may put our name on it just for recognition of one of our out of towners come in so they can see it. But most likely it, it'll just be the address bigger because it's, it's at the bottom now and it looks kind of raggedy. So I do want to fix that up. Okay. Hopefully a very simple, everything with this building anyone else? <clears throat> all right we thank you thank you appreciate it anyone who like to speak in favor anyone like to speak in opposition see none will wait rebuttal and take a show of hands of those in favor let the record show three and zero in opposition <laughs> Is that it? Do we have any executive session items? Nope. No site plans? No nothing site good? Plans, nothing. Well, for the good of the order, um, just two things. One, I wish, hope everyone has a really lovely Thanksgiving. Um, also, we won't, there's no meeting between now and the holiday party at my house. That's so right. I'm very excited to uh, have as many of the commissioners um, for you all to meet staff. Um, you'll meet the Board of Zoning Adjustment members there, um, previous staff from the planning department from years gone by. So we have a really good time. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and just as an information item for the commission, uh, you may have seen in the news that the um, proposed annexation by the city of Manchester failed. Yes. Um, so that has concluded and that uh, area of unincorporated St. Louis County will remain unincorporated for the foreseeable future.
So. so did the city of Manchester not want it or did the citizens not want it? So the vote was the, in the city of Manchester, it was about 80% voted for it, about 20% voted against it. In the unincorporated side, it was about 80% against it and oh 20%. <laughs> so it, it was a very, um, it was a uh, significant, yes. um, significant on, in the unincorporated side. And they're side. not coming back. I so they cannot say. speak. The map plan cycle will start again. <laughs> That's right. The map plan cycle starts again soon. <clears throat> All right. We need a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Here. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Those ayes have it. Keith, thanks for your uh, participation. Chris was on it too. <laughs> Thank you both. All righty. Have a good holiday. You too, Keith. Keith.